In this video, we'll be taking notes on the neurotransmitters and receptors in the somatic motor and autonomic motor pathways. Another word for the autonomic motor pathways is the visceral motor pathways. Before we look at the neurotransmitters and receptors involved in both of these motor pathways in detail, let's review some of the similarities and differences between these motor pathways. The somatic motor pathway and autonomic motor pathways are both divisions of your peripheral nervous system because they consist of motor neurons that extend out of your central nervous system and communicates with a target organ. Another word for the target organs of motor neurons is effectors. In the case of the somatic motor pathway, we can also think of this as our voluntary motor pathway because it's always going to target skeletal muscles and we usually have control over our skeletal muscles. The somatic motor pathway is going to involve a single myelinated motor neuron. Another word for a motor neuron is an efferent neuron. This term efferent refers to something that's moving outward or away from something. And in this case, these motor neurons are moving out of the central nervous system. So remember, the central nervous system includes your brain and your spinal cord. Now, in the case of the somatic motor pathway, again, we have a single motor neuron sending a motor command out to our skeletal muscles, and it's communicating with the skeletal muscles with a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, or ACH. Now, acetylcholine, whenever it binds to receptors on the skeletal muscles, it's always going to cause the skeletal muscles to contract. And therefore, we say acetylcholine is always excitatory. Now, let's look at the autonomic motor pathways. The autonomic motor pathways can be thought of as your involuntary motor pathways because we do not have voluntary control of these target organs. So notice that in the autonomic motor pathway, the target's always going to be cardiac muscles, smooth muscles, or glands. Remember, smooth muscles are muscles that are found in your internal organs like your iris, your stomach, your intestines, your blood vessels, and your urinary bladder. And when we use this term glands, we're referring to any type of tissue in your body that secretes a chemical. And so this includes thing like, things like endocrine glands that secrete hormones into your blood, sweat glands, mucus glands, digestive glands, tear glands, salivary glands, and also digestive glands. So these are all examples of glands that are found within your body and are controlled by the autonomic motor pathway. So what you'll notice here is that the autonomic motor pathway is divided into two separate divisions. The sympathetic motor pathway, which is associated with our fight or flight response. So these motor pathways are going to be most active in times of physical stress or emotional stress. And then we have our parasympathetic motor pathway, which we think of as our rest and digest phase. And so these motor pathways are most active whenever our body is at rest and when we are putting more energy towards digesting our food. So one thing that you should notice that separates the autonomic motor pathways from the somatic motor pathways is that the autonomic motor pathways always involve two motor neurons to reach the effector or target organ. So let's look at the sympathetic motor pathway first. Notice how the first motor neuron is myelinated and the second one is unmyelinated. And you, that's the same thing in the parasympathetic motor pathway. In the sympathetic motor pathway, that first motor neuron is really short and it synapses with the second motor neuron pretty close to the central nervous system. And then the second motor neuron is going to be really long and extend to the effector. The place where the first motor neuron and the second motor neuron synapse is called the autonomic ganglion. The term ganglion is used to refer to any clusters of neuronal cell bodies found in the peripheral nervous system. And these ganglia are gonna be found wherever there is one group of neurons that is synapsing with another group of neurons. Because the first motor neuron occurs before the autonomic ganglion, it's often referred to as the preganglionic neuron or the preganglionic fiber. And the second motor neuron, because it's occurring after the autonomic ganglion, we refer to it as the postganglionic neuron or postganglionic fiber. Notice that the preganglionic neuron communicates with the postganglionic neuron using acetylcholine. 
and that's always going to be true. So when acetylcholine is released from the preganglionic neuron, it's going to activate or excite the postganglionic neuron, causing a nerve signal to be sent down the postganglionic neuron. And then the postganglionic neuron in the sympathetic motor pathway will most often release norepinephrine onto the target. The only exception to this is if the target is sweat glands, and that's the only case where we're going to see acetylcholine being secreted by the sympathetic motor pathway. It's almost all of the postganglionic motor neurons are going to release norepinephrine in the sympathetic motor pathway. Now let's look at the parasympathetic motor pathway. Again, we have two motor neurons involved here, but notice how the first motor neuron is really long and extends almost all the way to the target. Remember that first motor neuron is called the preganglionic neuron. And the second motor neuron is called the postganglionic neuron. Where they synapse, it's called the autonomic ganglion. Notice, just like we saw before, the preganglionic neuron is going to communicate with the postganglionic neuron with acetylcholine. And that acetylcholine is always going to be excitatory in this case. And then the postganglionic neuron in the parasympathetic motor pathway will always release acetylcholine onto its target organs, or in other words, its effectors. Now, one thing I want to point out is that, remember, the somatic motor pathway's effect on the target is always going to be excitatory, whereas norepinephrine and acetylcholine, when it's being released by the autonomic motor neurons, it can be either excitatory or inhibitory depending on the type of receptor found on the target and on the type of target cell that is present. Now let's look at the type of receptors that are involved in these motor pathways. So here we have the somatic motor pathway, and then here we have some illustrations on the right here of the autonomic motor pathways. Now the somatic motor pathway, again, is only going to involve a single motor neuron or efferent neuron that's going to send a motor command out from the central nervous system to its effector, which is always going to be skeletal muscles. Remember, acetylcholine is always going to be the neurotransmitter involved here. And the receptor that's always going to be involved here is called a nicotinic receptor. The nicotinic receptors are also going to be located in all the autonomic ganglia involved in the autonomic motor pathways. And so you can see that all along here. So anywhere where you have the preganglionic neuron communicating with the postganglionic neuron, it's going to involve acetylcholine. And the nicotinic receptors are always going to be involved. Now, there's only one other type of receptor that will bind to acetylcholine, and that's called a muscarinic receptor. And you only find it on the autonomic effectors or the target organs that are receiving signals from the parasympathetic pathway. So the parasympathetic motor pathway has a very long preganglionic neuron. That preganglionic neuron is always going to be releasing acetylcholine onto the postganglionic neuron. And again, we're always going to have nicotinic receptors present there. Nicotinic receptors are always excitatory. So when acetylcholine binds to them, they're going to activate the cell that they are found on. And then the postganglionic neuron of the parasympathetic pathway always releases acetylcholine, and it's always going to bind to muscarinic receptors on the target. Now let's look at the sympathetic pathways involved here. So the sympathetic pathways, remember, they have shorter preganglionic neurons. You can see that here. But they're going to have um, longer postganglionic neurons. All right, so let's look at this kind of general pathway or the most common type of pathways you would see. Remember, again, preganglionic neurons are always releasing acetylcholine and binding to nicotinic receptors on the postganglionic neurons. In the case of the sympathetic pathways, they're usually going to be releasing norepinephrine. And there are two types of receptors that bind to norepinephrine. Those are alpha receptors and beta receptors. So alpha and beta receptors are going to be found on the autonomic effectors, or in other words, at target cells that are receiving norepinephrine from the sympathetic motor pathways. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that is something known as the adrenal sympathetic pathway. 
And the sympathetic nervous system has direct control over the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla is part of the adrenal gland, which is found on top of the kidneys. The adrenal gland actually consists of two endocrine glands. It, con it consists of the adrenal cortex, which is the outer part, and the adrenal medulla, which is the inner part. The adrenal medulla is simply a modified sympathetic autonomic ganglion because the preganglionic neuron is synapsing with tiny little neurons, neuron-like cells in the adrenal medulla, which are pretty much like the postganglionic neurons. Now, the only difference here is that these postganglionic neurons are all clustered within the adrenal medulla, so they don't have long axons. And whenever they secrete chemicals, they don't secrete norepinephrine as much as they secrete epinephrine. Okay, so the adrenal medulla will secrete epinephrine into the blood, and then epinephrine is capable of binding to beta receptors, just like norepinephrine is. So one of the major purposes of the sympathetic nervous system activating the adrenal medulla is that it releases epinephrine into the blood, and that actually prolongs the sympathetic nervous system response in the body. Okay, so let's make a little flow chart looking at the neurotransmitters in the somatic and autonomic motor pathways. Feel free to draw this along with me. So remember, there's only two neurotransmitters involved in the somatic and autonomic motor pathways, and that is acetylcholine, or ACH, and norepinephrine, or NE. Let's look at acetylcholine first. You're going to see the term cholinergic a lot, and that's used to describe any neurons or receptors that are related to acetylcholine. So if a neuron is described as being cholinergic, that means that it secretes acetylcholine as its neurotransmitter. If a receptor is described as being cholinergic, that means that it binds to and responds to acetylcholine. So let's answer two major questions associated with acetylcholine. One is, which neurons are cholinergic? So in other words, which neurons secrete acetylcholine? And the other question we're going to answer is, what are the two types of cholinergic receptors and where are they found? So which neurons are cholinergic? So based on that diagram that we just looked at, we know that all somatic motor neurons are cholinergic, right? All somatic motor neurons secrete acetylcholine. We also know that all preganglionic neurons of the autonomic nervous system are cholinergic. Notice how all the preganglionic neurons in this image are releasing acetylcholine. Also, all postganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic division are cholinergic as well. So the postganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic pathway are always cholinergic, releasing acetylcholine. And finally, only a few postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic division are considered cholinergic. And again, that's only going to be those postganglionic neurons that innervate the sweat glands. So all other postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic division are going to secrete norepinephrine. Okay, there's only really one exception to that, and that's to the sweat glands. Now let's look at the two different types of cholinergic receptors and where they are found. So again, remember the two different types of cholinergic receptors are nicotinic receptors. They're called nicotinic receptors because they also bind to nicotine. So nicotine can mimic acetylcholine when it binds to these receptors. Then we also have muscarinic receptors. Muscarin is a type of chemical found in some mushrooms, and it also can bind to these receptors and mimic acetylcholine. So nicotinic receptors are always excitatory. So that means when acetylcholine binds to these receptors, if these receptors were found on a neuron, it's going to cause that neuron to fire. If these nicotinic receptors were found on a muscle cell or a gland, it's going to cause that muscle cell to contract or that gland to start secreting chemicals. So where are nicotinic receptors located? Do you remember? Well, one place that they're located is in all autonomic ganglia. So in other words, they're located on all the cell bodies of the postganglionic neurons in the autonomic pathways. So here you can see nicotinic receptors located here in the autonomic ganglion on this 
postganglionic motor neuron, as well as the autonomic ganglia in the sympathetic pathway. And then they're also located on all targets of the somatic motor neurons, which are skeletal muscles. So skeletal muscles will always have nicotinic receptors on them. And finally, they're also going to be located in the cells in the adrenal medulla, because remember, the adrenal medulla is simply a modified sympathetic autonomic ganglion. And you can see that right here. So there's nicotinic receptors found in the adrenal medulla that bind to the acetylcholine being released by this preganglionic motor neuron. When acetylcholine binds to these nicotinic receptors, it causes the adrenal medulla to secrete large amounts of epinephrine and a little bit of norepinephrine into the blood. Now, the other type of cholinergic receptors is muscarinic receptors. They're not gonna be found in as many locations. They can be excitatory or inhibitory, and they'll be found on all parasympathetic target cells or effectors. Okay, so you can see that here. Here's the muscarinic receptors being found on the autonomic effectors receiving acetylcholine from the parasympathetic motor pathways. They'll also be found on any sympathetic target cells that receive acetylcholine. That's only going to happen in one case, and that's with the sweat glands. Okay, so sweat glands have muscarinic receptors because they are the only glands that receive acetylcholine from the sympathetic pathway. Now, the other neurotransmitter is norepinephrine. The term associated with norepinephrine is adrenergic, okay? So if a neuron is described as adrenergic, it's secreting norepinephrine. If a receptor is described as adrenergic, that means that it is binding to norepinephrine. The term adrenergic comes from the word adrenaline, and that's because another word that can be used in place of norepinephrine is noradrenaline. And that just kind of depends where you live in the world, whether you hear the term noradrenaline being used or the term norepinephrine being used. Anyway, so we're gonna answer the same two questions we answered before. So which neurons are adrenergic? Well, there's only one group of neurons that are adrenergic. In other words, release norepinephrine. And those are all the postganglionic neurons of the sympathetic division except for two exceptions, and that's those that innervate the sweat glands, because remember, those are the only ones that are considered cholinergic. They release acetylcholine. And then remember the postganglionic neurons that are found in the adrenal medulla here. Instead of secreting a lot of norepinephrine, they're mostly secreting epinephrine. Okay, so that's the only exceptions that we have there. But again, most sympathetic Postganglionic neurons are going to be secreting norepinephrine, so they're considered adrenergic. Now, what are the two types of adrenergic receptors and where are they found? Remember, those are alpha and beta receptors. Alpha receptors are usually excitatory, and beta receptors are going to be usually inhibitory. Again, we have some exceptions there. And alpha and beta receptors are only going to be found on the sympathetic target cells, or in other words, the effectors. So any cardiac muscles, smooth muscles, or glands receiving norepinephrine from the sympathetic motor pathways will have either alpha or beta receptors on them. All right, so let's test your understanding on the concepts we just learned by doing a couple of activities here. So in this first one, we're going to be looking at the types of motor neurons and their locations. So fill in the blanks with one of the following terms, either cholinergic or adrenergic. So number one, blank neurons secrete the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Well, that would be cholinergic. Number two, blank neurons secrete the neurotransmitter norepinephrine. Well, that would be adrenergic. Number three, all somatic motor neurons are, that would be cholinergic because they secrete acetylcholine. And remember, you can see that right here. They're releasing acetylcholine. Almost all sympathetic postganglionic nerve fibers are adrenergic because, again, they release norepinephrine. All autonomic preganglionic nerve fibers are cholinergic because they all release acetylcholine. All parasympathetic postganglionic nerve fibers are cholinergic because again, they release acetylcholine.
Sympathetic postganglionic nerve fibers that innervate the sweat glands are the only sympathetic postganglionic nerve fibers that are cholinergic. Because remember, almost all of them are going to be adrenergic. Now let's look at your ability to classify cholinergic and adrenergic receptors as either muscarinic, nicotinic, alpha, or beta. Blank and blank receptors are adrenergic, meaning they bind to and respond to norepinephrine. So that would be alpha and beta receptors. And that means that the next two blanks would be muscarinic and nicotinic receptors are cholinergic, meaning that they bind to and respond to acetylcholine. Now try to fill in these blanks. Blank adrenergic receptors are usually excitatory, whereas blank adrenergic receptors are usually inhibitory. So the first blank would be alpha, the second one would be beta. Blank cholinergic receptors are always excitatory. That would be nicotinic. Whereas the muscarinic cholinergic receptors can be excitatory or inhibitory depending on the target cell they are found on. So again, we're gonna be filling in the blanks with either muscarinic, nicotinic, alpha, or beta. Remember, muscarinic and nicotinic receptors are going to bind to acetylcholine and alpha and beta norepinephrine. Number one, blank receptors are found in all autonomic ganglia, regardless of whether it is the sympathetic or parasympathetic division. That would be nicotinic. Again, nicotinic receptors are always found in the autonomic ganglion. Blank and blank receptors would never be found in the parasympathetic motor pathway. Well, that would be alpha and beta receptors because they bind to norepinephrine and we never see norepinephrine in the parasympathetic motor pathways. All target cells that respond to acetylcholine would have muscarinic receptors embedded in their cell membranes. Again, muscarinic receptors are found on the target cells receiving acetylcholine. The two most common receptors found on the target cells of sympathetic motor pathways would be alpha and beta receptors. Number five, the cells in the adrenal medulla contain blank receptors. That would be nicotinic because remember, the adrenal medulla is simply like an autonomic ganglion, right? It's receiving signals from the preganglionic motor neurons. And that is the end of this video. And I hope that that helped you understand the neurotransmitters and the receptors involved in both the somatic motor pathway and the autonomic motor pathway.